going to talk about it too much because I'm going to dedicate a whole week to that later. But now we're walking into the holy place. Now understand this. Not everybody could go into the holy place. You had to be a priest. You had to be a leader to go there. The good thing about Jesus when he comes is you don't have to be a priest, a pastor, or a prophet to go into the presence of God. Now you can go into the presence of God just because Jesus came. And I'm going to teach about that in a few weeks, how the veil was torn. And now the presence of God is unleashed on us and we can have it if we want it. Uh huh. So now we're going to walk into the place. And the first thing you would see when you walked into the holy place, it, number one, this wasn't a bright room like this. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But, but the first thing you would see would be a table of, of showbread, shoe bread, whatever you more biblical sound than me. There would be a table there, and there would be two stacks of six loaves of fresh bread. With me so far, I don't, I don't want to lose you. I know this is teaching, man. I've told you that coming up. Now, now, now we walked in and we see the bread. Now, this, this bread represents the body of Jesus. The, this bread represents him, okay? Now, 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 to take note of this, the furniture in the outer court was all bronze. It was the brazen altar. It was the brazen labor. It was the bronze altar, the bronze labor. And now, in the holy place, everything is gold. Everything is gold. The table that the bread sits on is gold. It shows us that we have walked to another level with God. The Word of God says that we're changed from glory to glory. There are other dimensions of God that we can go to. There is, I'm going to say this with boldness. There is so much more to God than anybody here has ever encountered. Amen. And there is more of God that we can have if we're willing to sacrifice to have Him. So there are levels of this thing. In the outer court, you will see people. When you go into the holy place... This are, these are priests that say, you know what? I have paid the price. I have paid the sacrifice to go into the holy place. And here sits the table of bread. Now, the 12 loaves on this table, and the bread had to be replaced every week. Sabbath to Sabbath, the bread had to be replaced. Now, now that shows me one thing. I don't want to preach before I get started. But, but they, they would not allow this bread to sit on the table for three months and become stale, nasty bread. But this bread had ain't nothing worse than hard, moldy bread. You ever try to make a sandwich with old bread and it is so dry that if you don't get water immediately, you choke and die like Popeye's biscuits? Um, it is just one of those things where this bread had to be replaced. It was fresh. It was always fresh. And I think sometimes what God is trying to tell us, this is the first blank on your paper. Don't live on stale bread. Oh, that could have got a better response. I'm going to teach it to you in a minute. Don't live on stale bread. If we're not careful, we will live a Christian life staring back at what used to be fresh, trying to hold on to what used to be fresh, when the entire time God was trying to give us something fresh in this season. If we are not careful, I'm uh, fixing to teach, preach, run, do something. If we are not careful, we will think that revival can only come while singing the good old gospel ship. All the while not understanding that Kanye West has met Jesus and is leading hundreds of thousands of people to Jesus right now. So either you can look backwards and say, God can only move this way, or you could say, there may be fresh bread in the oven and God may be doing something. We do not serve method, but we do serve God. I will worship to I'll fly away. I'll. And if you're really church of God like I am, you get a double clap. I'll fly away. That's what we would do. I will worship and I will shout with you the best. But if they sing, oh, come to the altar, the Father's are, I'm going to worship there too. Because I do not allow myself to become fixated on stale bread. If the only move of God you talk about is a move of God that happened last year, 10 years ago or 30 years ago you could be living on stale bread. If the only move, of, listen, I am so glad he moved. If it was not for a move of God 17 years ago, I could not be saved today. But I have to be crazy enough to believe that I have not experienced the best that God has for me and that the best is still coming because all things work together for the good, right? So there must be more. If not, God would take me. That would be encouragement for anybody in this room that feels like you're the old person in this room. God is not done with you. God is not finished with you. Maybe he's just getting started with something fresh and new in your life. Do not live on stale bread. Amen. Move to another dimension. 
Move somewhere else. God is trying to do something fresh. If I would have told you a year ago that Kanye West was the number one soul winner in the kingdom right now, you would look at me like I was crazy. But maybe we could be blocking what God is trying to do because we think the only way the bread can be is what it used to be. And maybe God is trying to lead us somewhere completely different. The bread was fresh. The priests would come in and they would receive this bread. The bread represents, this is your second blank, I'm sorry. It represents provision. God is our provider. Amen. He is our provider. The bread of God is, is our provider. Jesus is our provider. John 6 and 35, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life and whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. There's totally a typo in the next two lines. Judge me if you will. I put it twice. I typed it at midnight. <laughs> Jesus represents fellowship. God wants to talk. One of the, one of the biggest words the church uses, especially the church, I, hey, let's go eat and have fellowship. I am this size now. I look like a blob now because of the word fellowship. We, we would leave church. Because one thing church people will do, we'll eat now. I mean, hey, we are, this morning, right after practice, I looked at Shelly and said, we can eat that. I thought about Red Bull. Red Bull sounds good, don't it? She said, hmm, that does sound good, don't it? Fellowship. By the way, we're going to Rebel after service. If y'all want to join us. Um, fellowship. It, it is sitting down. And these priests would come around and they would have fellowship with God. Now, here's what that tells me about God if I could teach you a little bit. Don't rush out of his presence. God, have fellowship. Talk and listen. God, listen, if we are not careful, and I've told you this before, but what the table of showbread shows us is this, that God wants to have conversation with us. If we are not guilty in times of prayer, we treat Jesus like Santa Claus, give him our wish list and leave and never hear what he has to say. When the important thing to note is what he has to say is way more important than what you do. What he has to say. Moments in my life where I felt like I was spinning my gears. If you've been a seasoned Christian, you know what I'm talking about. Moments in your life when you felt like all hope was gone. And all of a sudden, in a moment of fellowship, God would speak to you. And you would go, you know what? I could do this another day. I could keep going. When God speaks to you, the course of your life will change. Maybe it's a promise for the future. Maybe it's a promise for now. But, and you need to talk to God. You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. One of my favorite scriptures in the entire world. Because anybody that asks receives. You should. But I make it a case at the end of every prayer that I pray to stop and listen. I am at Forward Church today because at the end of a prayer I stopped and said, God, speak to me. I was praying one night. A lot of you know the story. If you've been through a growth track, you know the story. I was praying one night, bedside. It was a boring prayer. And if you've been a Christian more than a week, you understand not every time you pray do you feel angels flow in the room and go, oh. Sometimes you pray and the spirit of sleep comes all over your body. You wake up at 8 o'clock the next morning going, how did I get here? Maybe that's just me. Y'all are more safe than I am. It's okay. <laughs> but I, I was falling asleep and I said, no, I'm going to finish this prayer. And I got on my bedside and I prayed. And I said, God, speak to me. I was loving youth ministry. And the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, I want you to move to Somerville and plant a church. And I looked at God and said, God, where is Somerville? I didn't know where Somerville was. My life shifted on a moment of fellowship. And it could be that God wants something to say something powerful to you. But if you're not in a place where you're having fellowship, communion, a time to talk, and don't just talk, Listen. The next step of prayer, relax, don't rush. Thank you for provision and listen and ask him to speak to you. Turn to the back of that page. Now, now th that would be the first thing you see would be the bread, okay? The bread is provision. It is providing. It represents fellowship. Let's talk. Let's have conversation. And please, if you hear anything from that, don't live on stale bread. And maybe that, listen, that can be for a modern church too because by all, you know, Definitions, we would be considered a modern church, even when the pastor saying, I'd rather have Jesus. Uh, we would be considered a modern church. And if we're not careful, in 10 years, what we think is, is the only way to do it, God may be doing something different. And if we're not careful, we'd be living on stale bread and we'll come to the altar, and God has moved to something totally different. We have to be careful to never, ever live on stale bread. We have run so many people out of church living on stale bread. Amen. I'm going to move on, Pastor Brian. 
I'm going to move on. Good idea, right? All right, let's go. Now, now you would see the table of, of, of showbread there, and then after that, you would see what was called the golden lampstand. This is the only light in the room. The outer court is natural light. It's open air. So the sunlight fuels the outer court. Now, now, when you get to the holy place, when you get to the holy place, the only light in there is, is the golden lampstand. <clears throat> yep, felt that cough coming on. Now, the golden lampstand, it, it's really like a menorah if you know much about Hanukkah. So you have a centerpiece and you have branches coming off to make, to make the seven branch light. And, and it really, it's not like what you would call a candle. It's not like what you would call a lamp. You would plug it to your home. It was an oil lamp which means there was oil in it, a wick at the top, and the fire would burn the, the wick that got soaked in the oil. Can anybody tell me what they think the candlestick might represent if there's oil involved? Now, now the candlestick, I want to make sure I'm staying on this. The candle was, 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 not, was not just a candle, but an oil lamp, and the fire was never to be put out. The oil in the lamp represents the Holy Spirit. The bread is plenty to sustain you, but the Holy Spirit lights the way and guides you. Okay, so this lamp would light the way. Now, now hear me, hear me. Because in, in, in church, and there's a lot of mainstream churches that are growing by the thousands, and we bless them, and we praise God for them, because they're winning people to Jesus left and right, left and right, left and right. But always beware of a ministry that has bread, but no oil. Yeah. Okay, let me break that down to you a little bit. Bread is Jesus. He is the bread of life. I read that scripture a while ago. He is the bread of life. So when people receive salvation, they receive the bread. Not what modern people say, I gotta go get that bread. We're talking about money, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, I ain't dealing with y'all today. Young people got it old people's like, no, what he was talking about. So, so we're not talking about going to get that bread, it's money. He is the bread of life. So, so when people receive Jesus, they receive the bread of life. Not at me if you're kind of still with me. He is the bread of life. Now, on the opposite side is the light that lights the room. That is the Holy Spirit. Beware of all bread and no light. Because it is the light of the Holy Spirit that guides where you go in life. Okay. Jesus is not on earth today. I know maybe you've been taught different things in your life, but Jesus is not walking earth. However, he said in the book of John, I've got to go away. Because if I go away, he, he, he's talking about his death and ascending to heaven. I've got to go away because if I go away, I can send you a comforter that is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not roaming earth, but the Holy Spirit in you is. He is part of the Godhead. He is just as much God as Jesus or God himself is. And that is the Holy Spirit living inside of you. He is the oil. He is the light. Okay? Jesus, I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. John 8 and 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Matthew 5, see it switch. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? No. You throw it out and trample it underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Did you see the switch? Jesus says, I am the light. Now you are the light. I'm the light of the world. And hear me. Jesus lived your life when you accepted him. But if you're going to be guided by a light, it is the light and the power of of the Holy Spirit. Tommy, help me right quick, if you will. Now, if every light in this room goes out, like it just did except for the ones on stage, understand that everybody in this room will gravitate to the light source. You will gravitate to the light source. I can pick up that light and I can move it to the back of the room and while the light may be shifted, it will still be enough light to light the room. The people that you encounter every day on your job, in your family, in your community, at wherever you're going to be, is depending on you to be light. Amen. Okay. Would anybody agree that the world seems pretty dark? Yeah. 
If the world seems pretty dark, then where are they going to see the light from if you don't carry it? Where are they going to see the light that lights the world, that lights the room, if you don't carry it in a dark room sometimes because I am clumsy? When I'm getting up to go to the restroom in the middle of the night, I'll take my phone light and I'll begin to, to guide across the room because I can see the light that shines in front of me. When it's dark, I can't see anything. And I need you to understand that the Holy Spirit is a light in your life that can guide the path, that can walk in front of you, that can say, hey, make sure you step there. Make sure you go there. Make sure you don't do this. You better be careful about that, friend, because they're going to try to trip you up in the future. You better make sure you're living not in darkness but in light. It is what the Holy Spirit does for your life. You can bring the lights back up if you want to. The world is dark. You are the light. The world is dark. You are the light. Pastor Jonathan, help me as I begin to close out of this. Because the light is in you, you can be light to others. Hear me, man. God intended so much more for your life than just to have good church. He intended so much more for your life than just to come together and have good church. And it's amazing to me, me included, how sometimes that we have this release of guilt. Well, I went to church. I'm a good person. I went to church. That's all bread and no oil. Because a true light must be illuminated. What good would it do if I was going to the bathroom at 3 o'clock in the morning? Because all of us have hit our foot on something at 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of the dark, trying not to wake somebody else up. And right now I saw some of you going back to a dark place where you were like, I kicked a mess out of that dresser. And I don't know if I will save you for the next 10 seconds. What good would it do? i got to go to the bathroom. Let me make sure that I don't... I don't stumble over anything and turn the light on our cell phone and go, ah, all right, leave me. People around you are searching for something true and real and powerful. And you have the light. People are begging for someone to say, hey, I've encountered it. I know the truth. It set me free. Follow the light. It's so much more than just songs. It's so much more than just meeting together and saying, Oh, Roger, so good to see you, man. I got plugged that. I miss you, brother. It's so much more than fellowship. We go on fellowship over sesame chicken, fried rice, and an egg roll. In about 15 minutes. I don't know why I'm so hungry. Y'all pray for me. We're going to do that. That's necessary. It's the bread. But I need the light. You know what? When my life collapses, I need the light guiding me. When I attend, when I go to people's homes after their brothers have passed away and their moms have passed away, and it's some of the saddest times, we just... Bert's, Bert's dad just passed away and, and I, I called Pastor Jonathan and I said, ride with me. I'm going to go, so go to the house for a little bit. And you never know what you're going to walk into. But over and over again, I hear this story. I thought I wouldn't be able to handle this. But I feel peace like I've never felt before. You know what that is? That's the light. It's the Spirit of God living inside of you. It's why Jesus said, I've got to go because I've got to send him. Jesus said these words, it's better that I leave because you need the Holy Spirit. Think about that. Jesus, he's the guy that walked on water. If you don't think that's powerful, fill up your bathtub and try it today. And if you can do it, put down the drugs, ma'am. They're killing your life. Powerful. Jesus is doing crazy miracles. Taking fish and bread and feeding multitudes. That's really cool stuff. You know the kind of stuff Jesus was doing? 
demonic, evil people were trying to stop the move of God and Jesus was looking at them and speaking and it was leaving. Jesus is the kind of guy in the book of John that showed up to a funeral where a dude had been dead and he brought him back to life. That's powerful stuff. You ever went to a funeral and the guy got out of the casket? How powerful would that be? Jesus is healing people, man. He's doing the kind of stuff that we would say, oh, that's really cool, and it was powerful. He's Jesus, Savior of the world, and this guy says, I need to leave you because there's somebody coming that's going to be a comforter. There's somebody coming that's going to bring power. I'm glad you've got the bread. Have you got the light? I'm glad you got the bread. And I tell you every week, the bread's going to get you to heaven. Salvation is enough. It will get you to heaven because please hear me. Jesus is for heaven. The Holy Spirit is for here. You're saved, you're going to get to heaven. But I got to live till I get there. Jim Rayleigh, famous pastor, always says this. He says, People ask me, do I need the Holy Spirit to go to heaven? And I look back at it and I said, no, but you need me to go to Walmart. <laughs> and you know that's the truth. I don't need the Holy Spirit to go to heaven. I need him to live right now. I need him to know how to handle it. When I'm sitting there, tears running down my face, and I don't know how I'm going to respond, I don't know how people do it without the light. I don't know how people do it without the power of God flowing and moving inside of them. I need the Spirit of God. You need the Spirit of God. I'm so thankful for the bread, fresh bread. But God, let me be guided by the light. Let me see. Uh -huh. Be careful right there. You know what the light will do? The light will, when you meet a person for the first time, there's something inside of you going, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You ever met somebody and go, I don't know about them. Oh, they look like they okay, but there's just, that's the light going, be careful. They're not for you. They're not for you. And right now I'm talking, there are friends that you are connecting with in your life, and the light inside of you is going, uh-uh, uh-uh. You share the light, but you do not connect. We need the light. You need him. Have I convinced you yet that you need him? You need the light of God. Will you stand with me all over this room?